imagine a cube six miles across deep and high. Damn. And that's how much lava came out. The legendary Yellowstone National Park, a land of unparalleled beauty and mesmerizing geology, has shockingly closed its gates. Yes, you heard it right. This haven of awe-inspiring landscapes, teeming wildlife, and mind-boggling geothermal wonders has come to an abrupt halt. Well, it turns out that renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson's warning has come true. We're talking about a volcanic threat of epic proportions lurking beneath the park's serene surface. The magma, a boiling inferno of molten rock, is itching to burst forth with unimaginable force. Can you imagine the sheer force required to punch through solid rock? Join us on a journey of suspense and discovery as we delve deep into the heart of Yellowstone National Park, seeking answers to avert the cataclysmic fate that looms over this natural wonder. Let's begin. Yellowstone National Park is a massive park, stretching across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It's a nature lover's dream, covering a whopping 2.2 million acres. And let me tell you, there's nothing this park doesn't have. Let's start with the mind-blowing geothermal wonders that will leave you wide-eyed and amazed. Imagine over 10,000 geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles scattered throughout the park, creating a spectacle of bubbling pools and erupting geysers. One geyser you can't miss is the famous Old Faithful, shooting scorching hot water and steam over 100 feet into the sky like clockwork. And trust me, the vibrant colors of the Grand Prismatic Spring will stay with you long after you've left. But wait, there's more. Get ready to be blown away by the jaw-dropping Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Carved by the mighty Yellowstone River, this canyon showcases majestic yellow and orange cliffs that frame the powerful river. And let's not forget about Yellowstone Lake, a massive high-elevation lake that stretches over 130 square miles. Whether you're into boating, fishing, or simply taking a scenic drive along the shoreline, this lake has got you covered. Now, here comes the thrilling part. Beneath the park's serene surface lies something that'll give you goosebumps, a super volcano called the Yellowstone Caldera. It's like nature's own hidden monster. This gigantic volcanic system, approximately 45 miles in diameter, is a remnant of ancient cataclysmic eruptions that shook Yellowstone millions of years ago. But don't worry, the last mega eruption happened eons ago. However, the park still experiences small earthquakes, ground tremors, and bubbling geothermal activity, signs that the supervolcano isn't completely asleep. That's where the brave scientists come in. They're keeping a close eye on this sleeping giant using fancy tools to monitor its every move. One of the key ways they keep tabs on this underground monster is through volcanic gas monitoring. Volcanoes have a way of talking to us through gases like sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen sulfide. When these gases start acting up, increasing or deviating from their normal levels, it's like the volcano is giving us a sign that something big might be brewing. And trust me, the researchers are always the first to know. They're like the volcano's personal therapists, analyzing its behavior and trying to keep it calm. But how do they do it? Well, it's a team effort. They gather data from seismometers, those nifty instruments that detect even the tiniest earthquakes and ground tremors caused by volcanic activity. They also use GPS instruments to track any subtle shifts in the Earth's surface. It's like playing detective, following the clues left by the sneaky magma beneath our feet. And let's not forget the gas monitoring stations strategically placed throughout Yellowstone. These stations sniff out the gases emitted by the supervolcano, analyzing their composition and emission rates. It's like the volcano is letting out a big, smelly burp, and scientists are there to take note. All this data, seismic activity, ground deformation, gas emissions, is analyzed and integrated to create a comprehensive understanding of the supervolcano's behaviors. It's like piecing together a giant volcanic puzzle, trying to predict what might happen next. With these insights, scientists can provide advanced warnings and even forecast potential volcanic events. It's like having a superpower, being able to peek into the Earth's hidden secrets. Now, let's talk about what makes a supervolcano super. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and volcanologist Janine Krippner spilled the beans on the Star Talk podcast, and boy, did things get interesting. They explained that supervolcanoes are different from your average run-of-the-mill volcanoes because they've experienced massive eruptions in the past. 
We're talking eruptions so intense and colossal, they have their own special ranking on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, VEI-8. This scale measures the explosiveness and impact of volcanic eruptions, ranging from 0 to 8, with 8 being the oh my goodness we're all in trouble level. You see, VEI-8 eruptions are no joke. They involve enormous amounts of magma, towering eruption clouds, and a mind-boggling volume of volcanic material being spewed into the sky. It's like nature's fireworks on steroids. Scientists use a combination of factors like eruption column height, volume of erupted material, and eruption duration to determine the VEI level. They're like volcanic detectives, examining the clues left behind by past eruptions and trying to gauge the power of the volcano. But don't worry, not all eruptions are supersized. Lower VEI eruptions are more localized, with smaller ash plumes and a modest amount of volcanic material. They're like the little siblings of the super eruptions, still awe-inspiring in their own right, but not as earth-shattering. As we venture further up the volcanic explosivity index scale, things start to get seriously intense. Picture this, eruptions becoming more explosive, shooting up taller eruption columns like fiery fireworks reaching for the sky. And that's not all. There's a dramatic increase in the volume of erupted material, leading to the formation of pyroclastic flows. These flows are like fast-moving avalanches of hot ash, gases, and rock fragments barreling down the slopes of the volcano with a force that'll leave you breathless. But here's where it gets even more mind-boggling. When the VEI level hits 5, we're talking about large eruptions, folks. We're talking substantial ash plumes and a widespread distribution of volcanic material known as tephra. The impacts extend far beyond the immediate vicinity of the volcano, affecting a large area surrounding it. Think disruptions to transportation, infrastructure, and the environment. It's like Mother Nature herself is throwing a wild party, and everyone in the neighborhood is invited, whether they like it or not. But brace yourselves, because we're about to enter the realm of the super eruptions, VEI 6 to 8. These are the granddaddies of volcanic catastrophes, the stuff of legends. Imagine colossal eruption columns that reach the stratosphere, towering above the clouds like angry giants awakening from their slumber. The volume of erupted material is absolutely mind-boggling, and the effects go beyond regional. They're global. We're talking climate patterns being disrupted, environmental havoc being wreaked, and society being left in awe of the immense power of Mother Earth. That's why having something like the Volcanic Explosivity Index is absolutely crucial. It helps scientists categorize and compare volcanic eruptions based on their explosiveness, giving them a better understanding of the potential hazards and impacts. It's like having a playbook for disaster preparedness, allowing us to assess risks and come up with strategies to mitigate the destructive forces of nature in volcanic regions around the world. So kudos to the scientists who tirelessly study these volcanoes, keeping us one step ahead of the game. Now. Let's dive into the terrifying realm of super eruptions, shall we? Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and volcanologist Janine Krippner are here to guide us through this treacherous territory. They revealed that triggering a super eruption is no small feat. It requires an immense buildup of magma in a single location, like a pressure cooker ready to blow. This process takes time, folks. Lots and lots of time. We're talking about a prolonged period of magma accumulation beneath the Earth's surface slowly but shortly reaching a critical point. But here's the kicker. Tyson and Krippner dropped a bombshell. They discovered that for an eruption to occur, a higher proportion of liquid magma is necessary. And guess what? Beneath Yellowstone, the infamous supervolcano, they found that the liquid magma threshold is already over half of what's needed. Yikes. It's like the volcano is giving us a not-so-subtle warning, saying, watch out, folks, I'm getting ready to unleash some serious mayhem. And when a super eruption happens, oh boy, does it make an impact. Vast amounts of volcanic ash are propelled high into the atmosphere, reaching staggering altitudes of up to 80 miles. Can you imagine that? The dispersal of these ash particles over vast distances has a profound effect on global climate patterns. They become pawns in the atmospheric chess game, carried by air currents and weather systems. It's like a volcanic snowstorm, with tiny ash particles swirling through the air, traveling across regions, continents, and beyond. Now, let's talk about the chilling climate effects. When a volcanic eruption unleashes its fiery fury, the resulting ash spreads far and wide, creating a dense cloud that envelops the atmosphere. But this isn't your ordinary cloud. It's a game-changer known as volcanic winter. 
Brace yourselves for the mind-blowing consequences. As this dark ash cloud spreads throughout the atmosphere, it becomes a formidable barrier to sunlight. It absorbs and scatters sunlight, leading to a dramatic reduction in solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface. And let me tell you, this has profound effects on our planet's temperature and weather patterns. Those ash particles act like a stubborn bouncer, reflecting incoming sunlight back into space, causing a temporary cooling effect on the Earth's surface. It's like nature's own air conditioning system, turned up to the max. This cooling effect triggers a cascade of changes. Rainfall patterns go haywire, wind patterns get a makeover, and regional and global climates are thrown into disarray. It's like Mother Nature herself is playing a mischievous game of climate roulette, and we're left to deal with the consequences. And the consequences are far-reaching. Picture agricultural landscapes struggling to cope as growing seasons shift and crop yields dwindle. Ecosystems face disruptions as species grapple with the altered conditions, trying desperately to adapt. But it doesn't stop there. Human societies themselves are caught in the crosshairs. Economic challenges, resource scarcity, and social upheaval become unwelcome guests at the volcanic party. It's a chaotic dance, and we're just trying to keep our footing. Now, let's zoom in on one notable volcanic event that shook the world, the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815. This colossal eruption holds the title for one of the most powerful volcanic events in recorded history. Its impact? The infamous Year Without a Summer in 1816. The widespread dispersal of volcanic ash resulted in abnormally cold temperatures, failed harvests, and social unrest across the Northern Hemisphere. It's a chilling reminder of the global reach of volcanic disruptions. But there's more to the story as our intrepid experts Neil deGrasse Tyson and Janine Krippner reveal. Volcanic ash wreaks havoc on air travel as well. They emphasize the dangers posed to aircraft engines and flight operations when faced with this gritty adversary. Flying through volcanic ash is a risky business, my friends. Those tiny abrasive particles can damage engines and impair visibility, creating a sky-high danger zone for pilots and passengers alike. It's a vivid reminder of the importance of monitoring volcanic activity and issuing timely flight advisories during eruptions. And now, let's shine a spotlight on the heroes behind the scenes, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. Led by the United States Geological Survey, the University of Utah, and the National Park Service, this observatory serves as the guardian of the Yellowstone supervolcano. They tirelessly monitor and study its activity, using a wide range of techniques, from ground deformation measurements to satellite imagery analysis and thermal monitoring. It's like a volcanic detective squad, always on the lookout for signs of trouble beneath the Earth's surface. But fear not, my fellow adventurers. Despite the media's tendency to sensationalize the risks associated with Yellowstone's eruption, the scientific community remains committed to providing accurate information and ensuring public safety. Rest assured, the collaborative efforts and international cooperation involved in monitoring Yellowstone leave little room for government secrecy. When it comes to imminent eruptions, all hands are on deck and information is shared openly. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, do you think we'll be able to catch the Yellowstone volcano's potential eruption before it wreaks havoc? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.